Gareth Bale scores. And the international soccer community is like, eh, whatever. The University of Pittsburgh can't quit hating on Jordan Addison in USC. And so what should we make of Max Christie's debut with the Lakers in Summer League? Good morning, I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city of the world, Los Angeles. This is Faithful Angelinos. I'm overjoyed. I'm back home with my extremely lovely wife. And well, I'm gonna take a pause from that so we can chat up a little bit of sports while we have the chance. If you like the content we've been putting out for the last five months, clickety clack the like button. Clickety clack the subscribe button. There's a notifications bell. Hit that. It'll let you know when we drop new clips. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. For I am not God. It's a Sunday. I know I'm not God. So let's go to the scoreboard before we start talking about everything else that's going on in L.A. Three home runs for the Dodgers yesterday. The Dodgers are now on a seven-game winning streak, and they have a ten-and-a-half game lead in the NL West thanks to their 4-2 victory over the Giants yesterday at the Ravine. Meanwhile, Christian Arango scored, and Gareth Bale, as a substitute, scored his first goal for LAFC, LAFC 2, uh, Sporting Kansas City 0. Now, LAFC, they lead the Western Conference in MLS, right? And Gareth Bale, I watched the match, he did score his first goal, but it's kind of hilarious when you see the reaction in America as opposed to the world, which is far more soccer knowledgeable, right? MLSsoccer.com is like, whoa, Gareth Bale is showing his intentions on how he's gonna dominate and all this other stuff. And meanwhile, everybody around the world is like, that is the most unimpressive goal we've ever seen Gareth Bale score. <laughs> and I mean, as much as we like to enjoy MLS here, that's kind of a signal as to the talent level. These are the reactions on, uh, from fans around the world. Quote, brilliant goalkeeping, unquote. Another, I like Bale, but who is that keeper? Who's the keeper shouting at? He got beaten on the near post by a toe poke. Right? Not exactly like Zlatan's debut, not exactly like other international superstars' debut over in the United States. Now, don't get me wrong, you want as many goals as you could get in soccer. Just don't act like it was a Pele bicycle kick back in the 1980s, all right? By the way, to complete the uh, scoreboard, Las Vegas 84, Sparks 66 in WNBA, the Sparks fall to 12 and 15. Today in LA sports, uh, the Giants will play the Dodgers, that game's at one. Clayton Kershaw, seven and two. Alex Cobb, three and four. And of course, the Galaxy, the Galaxy, Galaxy game day. They'll be playing Atlanta United, that's at 6.30. Uh, Chicharito comes back. He's missed the last couple of days due to health and safety protocols, which means he probably picked up whatever the 50th strain of coronavirus is. Whatever, it gets weaker and weaker. Pittsburgh football coach Pat Narduzzi has ripped wide receiver Jordan Addison again, much like everybody in Pittsburgh is, for transferring to USC. Quote, sometimes people forget how they got where they are, unquote. No, I'm pretty sure Addison knew that he was living in Pittsburgh. <laughs> I've been to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, Los Angeles, right? Living in obscurity unless you're with the Steelers, Los Angeles. I'm also sure, Coach, that he knew that he was getting Keaton Slovis throwing the football to him this time, as opposed to Caleb Williams. No, Jordan Addison knew exactly where he was. And I also want to repeat something that hasn't been emphasized enough, because they're bringing up the word tampering again. There is no such thing as tampering in college football. Drop it. There's no such thing. 
What do we mean by this? The definition of tampering includes the word corruption. Okay? The powers that be in college football have not determined what is corrupt and what is not corrupt. Rules define what is corruption. Laws define what is corruption. Until you have the definition of corruption defined, it's not, it's not tampering. It's not. Until there is, you can argue whether or not USC broke rules. Until then, right now, Pittsburgh, you just have to file Jordan Addison leading under the headline of Our Lives Suck. Period. End of statement. We talked up Cole Swider for uh, shooting over 50% from three-point range in summer league for the Lakers. But we also have to be, uh, we also have to be honest with ourselves. Second round pick, Max Christie, the only pick the Lakers had, he stunk up the joint offensively. He did. 7.4 points per game, a 27% shooting uh, percentage. Now, I'm not going to sit there and, and come up with this panicky, oh my God, he's a bust thing. Not after Summer League. But clearly our expectations as Laker fans have to be held down. Have to be. Not when you're scoring only 7.4 points a game against a bunch of other rookies and scrubs and college kids. Now, he said the right things, and that his game will come over in time. Fine. We'll expect that. We'll live with it. I will say also the plus is his defense. Um, the coaches were raving about his defense. Say hello to my wife and her long legs out in the background. I'm very happy to see her again. But I'll give you an example of Max Christie's defense. He played against the MVP of Summer League, the guy who scored a boatload of points for the Warriors, whose name I'm skipping because after all, he's not Seth Curry. Having said that, um, he held the guy scoreless, 0 for 5. So there is a little bit of a plus there. Rose Bowl officials were rattled by USC and UCLA's intention to leave the Pac-12 Oh no, whatever, don't care. Look, of all the reactions that I've heard from USC and UCLA leaving, I thought, um, I used to think that Governor Teeth Whitener's reaction was the worst, right? Now it's the Rose Bowls because I don't care what the Rose Bowl thinks about USC or UCLA leaving because the Rose Bowl is a terrible place to watch a football game in the first place. Lovely backdrop, it is. But unless you have a fetish for pulling splinters out of your ass, why watch a game at the Rose Bowl? Bleachers? What are we, in high school? Modernize the place. Even the Coliseum got an upgrade. Chris Taylor is cleared to begin a rehab assignment for the Dodgers, according to Dodgers Radio. Uh, he had a broken foot. He probably still does, or it's almost healed. They're eyeing an August return. Justin Turner has missed the last couple of games, and he'll also miss today's game against the Giants, by the way. They still aren't sure how long Justin Turner is going to hold out or specifically where he's injured. They're just saying somewhere vague in the abdomen. We do know he got hurt while he was taking a swing. That doesn't really tell us a whole hell of a lot. Meanwhile, relief pitcher Blake Trinan, he uh, threw a bullpen session today. Dave Roberts said an August return is still possible. And former Dodgers outfielder Steven Souza Jr. has announced his retirement. He played eight seasons in the major leagues. He was mostly known for his time over in Tampa Bay. The perennially offended Bolt Beat, the official blog for Snowflake football fans, thinks it's a miscarriage of justice. Yes, an absolute travesty that Dak Prescott has a higher Madden rating than Justin Herbert. I want to know when and why Madden ratings actually became a thing. You do realize it doesn't exist, right? It is a virtual world as opposed to the real world. Could somebody finally tether us back to reality? I mean, you realize that that doesn't matter, right? Even fantasy football is somewhat loosely tethered to reality. 
I mean, when it comes to people talking about Madden ratings, and you just see this stuff on ESPN now, I would rather eat a seven-course meal of broken glass than to hear anyone's opinion on Madden ratings. And that also includes Bolt Beat. Get back to real life. There's a big, beautiful world out there beyond your flat-screen TV, folks. The Rams linebacker Traven Howard pulled his groin. <laughs> uh, may require surgery, though. Uh-oh. Nice thing that the Rams did, they gave Deshaun Jackson a ring for being part of last year's team. Now, the reason that it's a nice move is that he ended his season with the Raiders, and he was the one who asked out of Los Angeles in the first place. They still gave him a championship ring. Nice idea. The Rams also signed quarterback Luis Perez. Uh, he made a career out of playing for the XFL, the USFL, the Alliance of American Football. Are we sure there isn't a league somewhere in the Philippines that he hasn't played yet? I mean, <laughs> let's, not, let's not make too big of a deal out of this, okay? If you're playing in all these XFLs, USFLs, AAFs, it's kind of like getting great grades in summer school, right? You're not going to be the valedictorian of real school. You know what I'm saying? The LA Kings are bringing back forwards Gabriel Velarde and Jarrett Anderson Dolan for minimum wage plus incentives for food stamps in Section 8 if they reach certain goals. You know, maybe it'll light a fire under Velarde. He was a really high recruit, but he hasn't really shown out in the NHL. So we can only hope for that. Uh, they're also, the Kings were also optimistic about bringing back defenseman Mikey Anderson and Sean Dursey. A guy who covers the Kings believes that their top three lines are set offensively now. So there's not really gonna be as many battles in training camp. He also believes that there's allegedly $4 million in cap space. I'm starting to wonder if salary caps even exist sometimes, right? I mean, we were told there were two million, now it's four million. We were told the Kings were gonna be over the cap. It's all Greek to me. It's all Greek. Finally, the Clippers have signed Musa Diabate to a two-way contract. And I don't have a thing to say about Musa Diabate's attributes as a player because I have no idea. I just don't. But I am obsessed with his name because it sounds like something that you would do before a Tinder date. Like you would use your Musa to cover up your bald spot and then spritz yourself with a little Diabate. Do we really expect him to take the place of Kawhi Leonard? No. And I normally don't like making fun of people's names, but Musa Diabate sounds like something you would do before a Tinder date. That's all I'm saying. Now, if you enjoyed today's uh, broadcast of Faithful Angelinos, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We are trying to build something here for LA Sports. Thanks for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corte El Queso production. Have a great day.